Hosea chapter number 6. Come. It's an invitation of God. And let us return unto the Lord. But this is an invitation from the people. There will be a time when the people will search God. The nation of Israel will seek out God. Problem. For he has torn. So after a tearing, they will say, come. You know, it, it's harder saying, and I can speak of my own thing. This is sometimes that if you know somebody who's lost in your family, friends, co-workers, this is sometimes, you know, you guys say, Lord, you know better than I do. See, you know what we do? We pray for the Lord to comfort and bless them and all that. And that may not be the way of salvation. There may be times that God may have to tear them. There may be times in order for them to get saved, you've got to have God put them through the fire. I don't know. I've seen God work it both ways, and the person I'm thinking of has not got saved. But I have seen the Lord work in ways where I just let, you know, Lord, you know, I love that person very much. And whatever you need to do to, to get that person, do it. And I'm not doing it because I'm being hateful. I'm doing it because I want to see him get saved. Now, they didn't get saved. They come out of it, you know, I'm doing good or, you know, whatever. It's, Israel's going to be get torn. And they're going to say, come, let's go to God. And he will heal us. So they're going to acknowledge that, that an event is going to happen to them and that only God can take care of them. He has smitten and he will bind us up. Again, this is the nation of Israel reaching out. Isaiah 1, God says, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, 118, they shall be white as snow. God offers an invitation to Israel. And Israel is saying, come, let, let's go take it. After two days, he will revive us. Here's your revival. Nation of Israel. In the third day, mark the third days in the Bible, he will raise us up. They've been downcasted. They've been torn. They've been smitten. They've been humbled. They're full of pride. They're full of arrogancy. They were like that in Jesus' time. We'd be of Abraham's seed. We're not born of fornication like you. They thought because they were of Abraham, Isaac, you know, they're the, yeah, they are the elite. The problem is they let it go to their head. God needs to raise them up, not them raise themselves up. And we shall live in his sight, the millennium, and into eternity. With the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ, who they have rejected, watching out over his people, his brethren, his kindred, John chapter 1. Then shall we know. The future. If, if, that's conditional. If, a, there are, you know, you ought to mark your Bible. You ought to mark your Bible with, with words like if. If is free will. You may, you may not. That's God leaving it up to you. We follow on to know the Lord. So you can follow. Judas followed Jesus all the way to the Last Supper.
but did he know the Lord? You can go to church from the time you come out of your mother's womb all the way to the time you're deaf, 90, 100 years old. Did you know the Lord? Does the Lord know you? His going forth is prepared as the morning second advent. See, we're in the church age. We're in a period of darkness. Morning is the second advent. And he shall come unto us. Well, guess who's coming? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Jehovah Witness. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the, what is that? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jehovah, right? His glory, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us. Well, who's the one that's on the horseback that's the king of kings, the lord of lords? Whose name is the Word of God? Oh, he's got to be the capital o L, capital O, capital R, capital D. We're talking about the second advent. Now, how do you know you're talking about the second advent? He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Now, the latter and former rain is the climate description of the, of the land of Israel. It is very... Oh, well, not very, but it is very precise that these rains come when they when they do come for the crops to be planted and sown properly. Come too early, come too late. Uh, one of the prophets stood in the field one day and said, "I'm going to pray the Lord and send rain," and just brought terror to the people. Why? Because you're going to destroy our crops. Not the time of rain. Now, let me ask you a question. If we're talking about the millennium here, the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ, what period has just followed? Jacob's trouble. The great tribulation period. The tribulation. What is lacking in the tribulation? And I forget if it's the bowls, vials, or trumpet. Isn't there a time where there's no rain when Moses shows up and Elijah shows up? As a life, you know, there's drought, and you know, Elijah's going to do the same thing he did in his prophet. He's going to say, God, no rain. And I believe James tells us what that period of time was. And no rain, and then what's the water going to be? It's going to be blood. That's the tearing, that's the smiting. So, in three verses, you've seen the tribulation the second advent, and going into the millennium. O Ephraim. A group of people that proclaim to be of this tribe, which they're not, but that's what they say. What shall I do unto thee? <laughs> they ever come to your door? <laughs> Just remember the book of Hosea. <laughs> Sit outside your porch and read to him the book of Hosea. And then when you come to Ephraim, distress Ephraim. But before you read it, make them make them say, Oh, you guys of Ephraim, make them say it. Then remember Hosea and start reading to them and see what, what their eyeballs would do. Don't buy them in your house, Second John. And don't wish them a good day. Don't wish them God bless you, you know, and all that. Old Judah. What shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud. And as the early dew, it goeth away. But mist. It's not permanent. When Israel was in the wilderness and they got up in the morning, there was bread. There was manna. And what God's saying here, listen, you know what? There has been no true repentance. Oh, you repented. Oh, it's just like the do. Let me ask you a question. Faith by works. How many people do you really know? 
in America, let's pick out America, has ever seen to do, ever woke up early enough to see do, or seen the, the clouds of the early morning, you know, the fog, where's it go? As soon as the sun comes up, it's gone, isn't it? Therefore, have I hewed, cut down, God, cut down. I have hewed them by the prophets. Liken a prophet to an axe, a saw. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, Hebrews 4.12. You know what you do as, as a person that goes knocking on doors, pass out gospel tracts, preaching in the street, uh, teaching before a Sunday school, preaching before a group of people, having a proper radio program with the Bible, having a proper television program with the Bible, telling people what the Bible truly says. You know what you are? You are likened to a saw, a axe, and having a sword. And you hew and you slay people. No wonder they get in your face when you start preaching to them. Ow! It hurts! You know, the people that don't get upset are the ones that, you know, I, I, there's no hope. I try to go down every Saturday and preach at the farmer's market, and there are many, 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 many people there who do not respond. And I'll sit there like, you know what? Is it really worth it? And then I'll get one village idiot who's not there all the time, and he'll come up and he'll try to, to harass me. He'll try, and God's working on that guy. And you, if you've seen the videos, you'll see him come up and him and his cookie monster God or whatever it was. You know, you know what God's doing with that that young idiot? He's working on his heart and he's fighting, and not against me. He's fighting against God. Why would somebody, if you're just reading from a book, why would they come and oh, just shut up? What? I don't see anybody, you know, you're just too loud. You tell your husband he's too loud. I don't see you go up to a guy on a motorcycle and yell at him because his pipes are too loud, do you? You got a sword. And one of the armor that God has given you is a sword. Which is the word of God. And it hurts. And it ought to hurt. And if your peacher pansy guy has turned your, his sword into a pansy, threw up, Easter egg, fat man, and, and an el and coming down, well, I don't know where I got the elephant from. Uh, from you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach the people with kindness and goodness and all that, and don't you know, judge not least you be. Uh -huh. That's not what the Bible says. Then by the words of my mouth and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. Ephesians six seventeen. You know, before man is cast off in the lake of fire at the great white throne judgment. They're going to know exactly why they are put into the burning hell or the lake of fire. They're going to have understanding. For I desire mercy. Matthew 9, 13, 12, 7. And not sacrifice. Well, don't I bring my... Don't I bring my uh, my uh, bullet? Don't I bring the sheep? Don't I bring the goat? Don't I give to the United Way? Don't I show up for church? Am I not a nice person? But mistreat your employees? Treat your wife with harshness? Steal from your children for, for booze? Raise your children in a way that ought not to be so. 
the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. People were coming, we're, we're north in Israel. I mean, they had their own private RC organization. And they're just showing up, here I am. Grandma taught us how to do this. I, George, since we came over on whatever boat that came over to America, we've been serving this God, and we're going to serve this God till we die, and then you're going to pray for me afterwards. And then you die and go to hell and you didn't do God no good. Mercy is of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is religion? Anything but mercy because they gave Christ a cross. And what more proper person was there ever to be kind and gentle to people who never got angry without a cause? Never killed anybody. Never hit anybody. They didn't show Jesus mercy. They didn't show the people mercy. Jesus says, come on to me and I'll take the burden. Give it to me. And he was talking about what the Pharisees and Sadducees had put on the people. You can only go so far. You can't carry your bed. He knows every time that Jesus worked a miracle, they got angry. A guy walks in the temple like he's supposed to. He proclaims before them, say, hey, I was blind, but now I see. Call your parents. Was this guy really blind? We don't believe it. Who is this guy? Who did this? Why did he do it? Well, well. They never broke out in, in laughter and joyful time. Hey, this guy was leper. You imagine that guy went to the temple after he praised God for the leprosy being put away? <coughs> <coughs> They have to get mad because they have to go find that part in you know, Leviticus 13. Then you cover 14 inches of dust. We go, <coughs> Who made you free of your leprosy? That's never happened. The only time it happened, it happened to one of those Gentiles. They were mean and nasty. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And now it's of God more than burnt offerings. You can't bring an offering and not have mercy and not know God and think God's going to accept it. You can sign whatever check you want and give whatever you want to the church and all that. If you don't know who God is and you don't have mercy, God, it's just in the... It's not crazy because God says, I want a cheerful giver. I want somebody who's going to give and going to give of their own willing heart. Message about giving. But they... Like men, for all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Transgress the covenant. They violated what God, the seal that he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They have, they, there have they dwelt treacherously against me. Matthew 12, 34, Luke 6, 45. But they brought their offering. Let's get this. Let's just take this illustration for this time frame. I have a wife. All right. On Valentine's Day, I give her a box of heart chocolate, and, and you know, for the rest of you, you just expect, you know, you know, I love you, right? Cook and clean for me. Don't do anything else for her. I gave her a box of chocolate. Isn't that good enough? Where's the mercy? Where's the knowledge that she's your wife? I hear in Christian men with their, oh, that woman over there, that my other half. Well, other half? I thought the Bible said you were supposed to be a whole. You start talking about other half, you violated the Bible with your marriage. You took a, you didn't cleave to your wife, you took a cleaver to your wife. And God expects you, man, in your marriage to have mercy and knowledge of God. What's the knowledge of God? You're to love your wife like you love your own self, you idiot. That's what God says. Now, you're not to treat her like a rough dog, like a donkey, or anything else that carries a pack. She's not a horse.
Take her out every once in a while. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity. Oh, imagine that. Name in a whole city. And it's polluted with blood. Now, what do you think? Murdering people. The violation of the law here is not just they're murdering people. They're not putting them to, to capital punishment. Because that's cruel and unusual punishment. Imagine the Catholics outside of a prison. Any Catholic who don't know no history. Hold on, sign, thou shalt not kill. They're going to put a, a prisoner for murder who's been charged by a court. Who has been found sentenced of murder to death by a court in this country whether it be jury or it be judge with two lawyers at the thing a defense and a, 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 a plaintiff and then finding that guy guilty setting a date for his execution staying out there with signs saying thou shalt not kill he has killed somebody thou shalt not kill and their church has killed christians left and right fox's book of martyrs why don't you take your own medicine you idiots you haven't shown no mercy to anybody who's a Bible-believing Christian in your history. And look at all the stuff you put on your people. Do you know who the poorest community and countries that are in this world? They're under one certain church with a big fat guy who claims to be God the Father with all riches. Who has his own mobile and people carrying him around and his own bodyguard. Imagine, if he's God, why does he need a bodyguard? Who's going to kill God? He's got his own post office. He's got his own mint. He's got his own army. And he can't even walk out of the bathtub without slipping. And all but the present ones, some of the guys just retired out, of, are all dead and haven't came out of the grave. You want to give anybody in the church any time of day like that. And yet Jesus in heaven, a miserable little woman in somewhere, uh, you know, family sick and being beaten by her husband and, and just, just trying to get by, loves the Lord, and just reaches out with a prayer and God steps down feeding all the animals in the universe, taking care of all the things, make sure all the steps down to hear that woman's prayer. See, we want God to show us mercy, but we don't want to give it out to ourselves. And you realize, judge not me, she be judged. But what meat you may, would be meat unto, or, I'm misquoting the verse, but would be meted to you. Listen, you want God to treat you merciful, you better treat others with mercy. That's in both. That's in the Old Testament, that's in the Gospels, and that's in the New Testament. And as troops of robbers, ooh, look at that, a whole army of robbers. As a troop of robbers wait for a, ma a man. Isn't that like Proverbs 1? You get a group of people. Hey, why don't you come and join us so we go kill this guy and get all his spoil and be happy and go in one purse? Shall we end it there at the comma and turn the comma into a period? Because you don't want to read what's next. So the company of priests murder in the way by consent. They gave Judas money to turn in Jesus Christ, for they commit lewdness. How do you know that? Well, when Judas finally, you know what, his conscience, his conscience really irked him. He had that money. Who did he run to? He ran to the priest and threw the money down. And they had no knowledge of God. They said, well, we'll just bury it. We'll just build a cemetery for all those peasant little people to get rid of their stupid, ugly little bodies because they can't afford to pay for our candles. Blah, 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 blah. There was a city, I think it's Naboth. Was that the guy's name? With Jezebel. Hey, raise Naboth uh, on, up on high and, and, you know, proclaim it. And then get two men to go in there and say, hey, he, he violated the king. He made fun of President Obama. And then go in there and kill him. So the whole city does it. You tell me there was no priest there? Her priests were all around. She had 400 prophets. 
We're not talking about God's priests here. We're talking about the priests of Israel. The ones dedicated to the second, sacred, uh, sacred cow. The holy cow. Brr. The Indian God that walks over there that you can't have a hamburger because it's grandma. I remember when grandpa used to listen to, to the baseball all the time. One announcer all the time. Holy cow this. Holy cow that. Aaron made a cow. And then they had a religious service. Strip it all off. Danced in the music. Oogie boogie woogie. And it angered God. And God said, you better get your butt down there, Moses. But I'm going to start burning some people. And, it, and Moses starts walking down. And he runs into Joshua. Joshua, I think they're having a war down there. And Moses is like, no, I hear kumbaya. Oh, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, Lord. We're having a sexual orgy, Lord. And Moses gets down there and breaks all Ten Commandments when he finds out what they're doing. Ten Commandments in the written form never made it to the, to the children of Israel. They were broken. Joshua probably turned to Moses and said, Oops, no, that was no oops, Joshua. God has something to say against these priests. What did it say with Jesus? That Judas retained a band of soldiers from who? Who was the first person they brought Jesus Christ to after the garden? Those soldiers were of the priest. And they bound Jesus and brought him to Campus. Those weren't Roman soldiers that appeared with Judas in the garden. They were the priest soldiers. For what? For 30 pieces of silver, bring that guy in so we can kill him. And we don't even have the gall to kill him ourselves. We're going to turn him over to government. That's the story of Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab's two sissies sucking his pants, peeing in his pampers. Oh, I'll turn it over to Jezebel, the government. Let her do it. So she makes a royal decree and Naboth dies. The Roman government makes a royal decree and Jesus dies. I think it was a vineyard, wasn't it? For some herbs. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. I wonder what those, I don't know, I wonder what those, they call themselves over there in Utah as the clergy. I don't, I don't know. But I've seen a horrible thing in Israel. What? People are being killed and the priests are involved. You know World War II was sanctioned by the Roman Catholic Church or the SS and were involved in one particular church. Except for at the Nuremberg trial, the church wasn't there. There's a, there is the, shall I say it, whoredom of Ephraim? How many wives you got, Mr. Bicycle Man? How many? And you pay for them all? <laughs> Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, now let's go back to Judah. Station identification, O Judah, commercial. He has, he has set and harvest for thee. When I, God, return the captivity of my people. So even though you're going away, you're coming back. <laughs> and people will say, God's all finished with Israel. Really? And you'll be found out to be a liar. And God be true. 